What's going on, family? Welcome back. Welcome back. I told you we'd be back. I just didn't tell you when, right? Just so happens one week later, back in the building, it's another Cigars and Conversation with a Puff a Minute. I'm your man, Cigar Mick. Got my very, very special guest with me today. My sister, she's just a girl from Compton. Just a girl from Compton. Tamika's in the building, y'all. What's going on, big What's going girl? On, sis? How you doing? You already know. You already know. I was telling you before, it's like, you know what? The last time you came and joined, uh-huh. that was like one of the highest like rated. Oh, you know what so- I'm saying? Yeah, man. Like, I love it. Come on back. Come on back. What you I doing today? I told you. I told you. you. Any Sunday you need me, yes, I'm yes. good. Hey, during the week, if it's before the lounge open, I'm good. Exactly. We let's do it. Exactly. Well, you already know how yeah. we start off, sis. Yeah. What you smoking today? So you know they say the best cigars are the ones that are gifted, right? Love it. So I'm smoking an Odie Bugatti. A Drew Estate BLTL. Is that right? Gifted to me by my sister, uh, Sheree, Sherry Harris. Yeah. So, uh, back in L.A., this was one of me and Sherry Sticks. Uh-huh. And, you know, they're hard to find, you know, because he brought them, what, he they leased them in 2012. Yeah, yeah. Then he what, brought it back during um, the 2020 uh well, back then it was IPC. IPCPA. Yeah, 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 that yeah. was a whole lot of letters. Now it's PCA. <laughs> I'm so glad they did. They didn't drop some of them letters. So you've been in the game for a while. You remember yeah. IPCPA? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So um, they rebrought it back into and but they only sell them in like um, certain retail stores of theirs. Really? So okay. It's so hard to get. So my sis, she blessed me with one. So up, I'm on that Drew Estate BOTL. Shout what out you to got? Sherry, man. Shout out to Sherry. She actually um she told me about that stick. She asked me how. To I ever tried it. Oh, you know what I'm man. saying? But I haven't. But she told me that's a I, fire stick. It's a fire stick. That's like, I have a few of them um, yeah. back in Compton in my humidor. And they're not because they're so hard to get. Yeah, yeah. They, they like them bulls. Like, they hard to get. Yeah. And so you just hold on to them once you get them. Well, speaking of hard to get, you know what I'm saying? And, and going deep <laughs> in the humidor, I am smoking that Compton cigar mm. by Mika. I didn't even know. I was hiding from you. I was hiding from you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is her Maduro stick. You know what I'm saying? So uh, shout out Bones. Mr. Bones, right? So shout oh, out to man. you, man, paying homage to your pops with that's, this stick right here. Man. That's what it is, yo. That's what it is. So yeah, I figured I'd surprise you. Oh, uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew you was going to come with something. You know, you, you be having the hitters. Hey, you, you, you know, know, y'all come with the hitters. I'd be like, dang, I ain't seen that stick in forever. <laughs> right, y'all right. Y'all be having them. So yeah, I, well, I, this ain't know, it right here. Man, oh, I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. So again, man, I mean, it's Sunday, man. We just conversating. Mm-hmm. Never come up here with an agenda, right? Mm-hmm. This this uh podcast is 100 percent extemporaneous. <laughs> that means we make it up as we go, go. Y'all. You know what I'm saying? On the spot type of deal. So, you know, is there anything on your mind before we get started? You know what I'm saying? And then we could just jump into anything. Man, I'm still just tired recovering between the anniversary and then <sighs> We left straight after the anniversary and went to Houston. Y'all wrong for that, man. I'm still a little bitter. I'm nah. still a little bitter. Well, you know, I go every year. You know, Houston Cigar with <laughs> my people, so yeah. I never miss it. Yeah. I, I so, but now, yeah, I'm, I'm still tired. It, it was yeah. all gas, no brakes for the anniversary. Then yeah. All gas, no brakes. When we got there, to the point, I didn't even go to sleep. I, I worked here. Y'all know I'm real dedicated. Exactly. So I worked here that Wednesday. Right, right. Got off at midnight. My flight was at 6 in the morning. I still had to go home and wash Whew. at 4. And so I did. I had to be at the airport at 4. So I got my couple of hours on the plane when um, Jay and Mel got to Houston. They was like, how are you still up? I was like, by the grace of God. Because, exactly. I, man, I don't even know. But uh, but let's see. What, what, I, there's a, quite a few things. Um... You know, I want to talk about support. Okay, right? yeah. You know, I. You know what? Yeah, that's going, important. Yeah, going to um, Houston. Uh-huh. One thing I, I I loved, I saw so many different cigar groups. Shout out to. Um, Chicago and St. Louis. When I tell you, Mick, yeah. they was like thirty deep. Really, thirty like wow, deep. Like, wow. I mean, matching T-shirts. Yeah, they got chance. I don't know if I'm ready for a chant, but <laughs> like, like, but I, but I was just I was sitting around and you know that kind of stuff. I was just sitting around. But looking. these were groups, though. No, well, well, no, not even like cigar groups. They're, really, they they were like people that. Um, 
like how we just like we smoke. You right, know? right. I, know, yeah. I mean, I know you guys got the syndicate out here. You well, know, yeah, you know, yeah. You know. but yeah, but you know, but no, yeah. but like how we all just get together and just chill and smoke. Yeah. So a lot of them, I think, you know, I think a couple of them might have been cigar groups. Okay. But for the most, they were just all people that was from the same area. Right, right. And they all smoked together and they decided to come and wow, man, when I tell you it was beautiful and I and I just wish. That it could be more of that in, yeah. in this community. Uh, you know, you see a lot of stuff. Or I, I know I see a lot of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Can't speak for nobody else. And, and, you know, I just, the support, I just wish that everybody, especially when it comes to um, our community, I yeah. wish that we could just support each other a little more, you know. I agree, yeah. Yeah, you can't be so critical on things. You can't yeah. be like, oh, well, I didn't like it. You know, nothing's going to be perfect. Exactly. So. I just saw, so I just, but it, it's support, like, I'm just, I was at all at, at the groups that were just there in support, but then everybody that came from all, all over, so, if we mm. can just get that, I mean, if each one of these cities can get that support like right, that, right. that would be amazing. You we, know, you would think that that wouldn't be hard here yeah. in Las Vegas, because the community is so compact, mm -hmm. right? It's not like a spread out wide, like, like L.A., mm -hmm. you know, like New York, or, you right. know, Atlanta, you know, and Atlanta is really huge, man. But they have a lot of different spots as well. But, you know, in Vegas, it's kind of, you know, everybody pretty much knows everybody right. for the most part, right? You right. see, so to, to have that kind of support. Now, if you want that kind of support when you go into another city, right, right with people coming from Vegas, uh -huh. kind of need to let them know that you're going to Houston. Right. Don't with you. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of like. Can't, oh, can't keep man. it a secret. You know what I'm saying? I talked no. about it. Y'all know I talked about it. Y'all know I was. I'm but, you. Uh, uh, hey, the next one, let, let's see. Uh, I think D.C. got something going on mm. this month. You know, Atlanta Cigar Week is coming up. Philly is coming up. Word, so, word. Let, I mean, pick a day. Hey, I got that Frontier Pass. Do you I'm really? like, oh, you I don't like, I don't like Frontier, but. Exactly. Hey. <laughs> oh, I, but I support Frontier now. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, I'm supporting them, too. I got that friends and family. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, my, my cousin be hooking me up on the. On the on the flights. Yeah, I got that summer pass where you can fly yeah. anywhere. Exactly. <sighs> no, I mean, actually, fly. I got the, the year pass. I didn't get this. I got my daughter the summer pass. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't know how she was going to react to it, so. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But, hey, hey, shout out to uh, Teddy Jam. What up, Teddy? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Will, man. I see you out there, family. What's That's what's up, man. Will Ford. Yeah, yeah. See, man. now I can see y'all this week, right? I couldn't see who was on last week. Um, but, yeah, that's what's up, man. But, no, nah, I, I think that that's 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 a, that's a good topic right there um, on support, right? Yeah. Because, you know, for, for some reason, we have a tendency, you know, and I'm not talking about here. Or right, anything, yeah, I'm just talking in, about in general. In general mm -hmm. We have a tendency to knock down somebody that's doing something, so, right? It, it, Especially it, it, if they're doing something that we feel like is in our uh -huh. lane or, you know what I'm saying, or what have you. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't have more than one lounge here. You can't have yeah. more than one cigar group or, right. or, or you pit these people against each other yeah. so to speak right but it's all love and that's what i love about tapping ash right? right when we come up in here is because you know i feel like we have that kind of support mm -hmm. right we got all of the groups that show up here and everybody parties together right everybody you know here. it's not like you got one group sitting over there and another group sitting over here or right so on and everybody so forth. is in unless they start saying what group they're from you don't even you don't really know, know exactly. because everybody just everybody's just why. hanging out it, you know? it, a joke uh kind of formed and i didn't kind of ran with it uh yeah. I I start calling myself the independent contractor. Yeah, okay. Uh, because and and because people um one thing I love, like, if you send me a puff of minute shirt, yeah, I'm yeah, rocking it. Yeah. If, if GTG send me one, Action right. Out, whoever sends me, like, I'm, I'm supporting everybody. So I call myself the independent contractor exactly. because I'm not behold to just one exactly. thing. But that's what one thing here about TAP, everybody supports everybody. And exactly. that's that's dope. And we I'm the same way, though. Here. We're yeah, we're actually, a family. I'm the same way. Family. I've been asked to join certain groups over, you know, different mm -hmm. periods of times, but I always say, listen, I got to stay agnostic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm Switzerland right here, right? right? I'm right. supporting everybody. Everybody. You know, so it, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, uh, I got to get with my band, um, 
um, Trey Goose from CDL's oh. Golf and Cigar, uh -huh. right? Because he started a new podcast. Oh, did he? Man, the one I think I, first thing I said to him was, bro, I'm proud of you. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Do what you do, man. Right. If there's anything I could do to help you out, right. you know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. So we're looking at doing some type of a collab. I, I mean, I applaud you. you. You know what I'm saying? You and Kareem coming on and doing the tap-in Tuesdays now. <laughs> yeah. You know what we, I'm saying? We getting it together. We getting it together. I, it, yeah. it legit just came out the air. Our, my focus was, and you know me, I always want to make sure that wherever I'm at, I'm making sure that it's being highlighted in mm -hmm. the proper way. Mm -hmm. And so, by us carrying over 280 cigars here at TAP, I wanted, there's no way, I mean, even though I do social media and I can post about them, sure, yeah. I just, I mean, I wanted to bring a little more light to the humidor. And so, that's the whole purpose of Tap In Tuesday. Nice. Is to highlight the cigars that are in that we carry inside the Himador. Okay. So, um, it's a little shaky. <laughs> we yeah we I mean we we I just mean, we we just figured out our spot. Go back to like 2018 and look at some of the early puff <laughs> <laughs> a minute videos. Right, you'll feel yeah. a lot better about yeah. yourself right this now. This right here, I, I, man. Yeah. I don't know. I bought some. Of the some lapel mics and uh -huh. I don't know if they linked up right to the to the phone the other day. So I mean, really but did. it's all a trial and error. And I, exactly. I mean, I appreciate mm -hmm. everybody who's like even logged in and just paid attention to our shenanigans <laughs> as we go. Um, um, Carl but, is like a regular now. Isn't right. right. <laughs> Who would have thought we would have got Carl to to exactly. talk? <laughs> like Carl is super cool. Shout out to Carl. Mm -hmm. Carl is one of our members, and he's uh, come on with us for the last. Two Two weeks so right, right. but we tell anybody if you here and you want to just smoke with it because that's what it is it's just us getting together and smoking and smoking what's in the hemador and telling the folks what telling the folks what we like there so, it is there it is yeah. exactly man you know what i'm saying and again cigars and conversation that's yeah. the best thing about this right here yes you know what i'm saying when you smoking a cigar right you just sit down and have a conversation and some you know, of the best conversations exactly I've exactly here. so yeah. you know it, the camera could be on camera could be off mm -hmm. but right. at the end of the day when i'm smoking this is what i'm doing right you know so yeah Let, let's take a quick turn man so i don't know like you know how connected are you are on this whole like scene right now but what, what's going down like what's your thoughts on the former president you know what i'm saying and it, it was happening with him right now you know uh, you know what mm -hmm. so i'm this is what i need to know and yeah. I'm, I'm not very versed because real talk i tell you yeah when he became president um and all that was going on, I, like, disconnected. Like, if they started mentioning him on TV, because, yeah, yeah. you know, they say what you receive is what you put into your, what you watch and stuff really affects you. It's called was, programming for a reason. Yeah, I, when I tell you, I was, they would mention his name and, like, anxiety would come over me. Really? Like, yeah. I, it was bad. Like, yeah. I used to get so frustrated with my mother, because I'd be like, why are we watching about him again? Right, um, right. Yeah. But, I hope I, I hope that all this that's going on that he's not able to run again. Okay. I okay. I hope that he yeah. is going to be treated like a common person and uh -huh. actually go to jail. Right. That's right. that's yeah. my hope. So I'm sorry yeah. if that's not other people's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's you know it's just crazy. Didn't he just didn't they he he's on tape now saying something about uh some documents that he had after he left it's crazy like they had to let his his attorney go right because his attorney was becoming complicit as well right so and i know a lot of people out there like i know this is a hot topic it's, mm. it's a hot button topic right. i should say you got people on both sides yeah. of this, and they're trying to politicize this whole thing like uh -huh. oh this is uh you know unfair treatment and you know and they're they're picking on this dude and this but no this is a criminal case right criminal and case. and at the end of the day right to your point everybody should get the same right. i know in this country that's not that's normal. normal that's not yeah. the norm for everybody to yeah. get the same treatment in a, in a civil right. or a criminal case so to speak you know but again there are um because you'll have people who will say well what about um hillary you right. know what i'm saying what about the the the, the server that she yeah. had right or what about even the investigation right now into biden right and stuff like that i had a conversation early this week right and this was like people tend to you know to, to go along those lines but i'm saying they were very skillful in how they wrote up this man's charges because they said it was a willful intention oh. okay a willful intention right to you know to 
to hide like classified information oh. and stuff. So that's there's a difference, difference in the cases, man. You oh, know what I'm saying? Man. So so yeah, so that's that's the thing about it, man. And again, I just feel like um in America we don't uh we we kind of wash over history we, you know what i'm saying we don't remember because i mean i got people out there who are very very adamant that they cannot stand the current president and you know mm -hmm. that is what you i'm telling yeah. you there's not none of them are good right right, right. they all they all got issues you they know what all, i'm saying all. they all gonna have issues it's not gonna be a perfect candidate ever, ever you know what i'm saying but i'm saying but you got to think back to where we were you know what right. i'm saying some years ago right when this country was on the verge of you know, basically a whole nother civil war. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was it was crazy. There was a conversation being yeah. held here. And, you know, I, me, I try not to get into too many political conversations mm -hmm. and things like that. But I sat back and listened. And there was some gentlemen here. And one was saying that he hopes, you know, he gets reelected because he made so much money you know he made the best money right, right. and then I but, one a lot. Yeah, but yeah. one of the other members came in and was like no you do realize that was from when Obama was in president you know like everything so the exactly. things that yeah. you know that are going on now is happening because when when the, uh, when Orange was in you know office you know yeah. We're feeling the effects of it now. Right. You know, the, your money you were making when uh, Orange was in office was because it's, it's the things that Obama set forth. So, right, right. Yeah. But I like to sit back and li I actually listen again. I don't, I don't engage in a lot of the conversations when it comes to that. Exactly. Um, because again, I'm not as as versed on it as I should be. Uh -huh. But I just to hear different people' opinions, and then I'm one of the ones I'll hear something, then I'll go research it and, and read about it myself make right, sure right. you know because everybody because everybody interprets things different exactly so you know and you have to you have to be careful but yeah it, it, but they got bad for me when he was in office yeah yeah, yeah got like bad I, for a lot of yeah. us yeah when he was in office i'm just saying you know right. what I'm saying? it was like you couldn't like walk to your car you know what i'm saying without somebody you know what i'm saying you know calling the police a suspicious guy walking yeah. to a car in this neighborhood I'm like, yeah. it was just crazy like the people in america just like every but it was that dog whistle that he continued yeah. to blow you know what's so funny so everybody a lot of people know i'm born and raised in compton, raised in compton and everybody right. has this notion of what compton is and i'm one of the ones that's why i always tell people i wear a compton on my back because mm -hmm. uh I'm real big on making sure that people know that there are real people living Compton. So, again, yeah. I grew up very Cosby Show. Like, uh, yeah. two-parent home. Uh, my parents, both my parents had really great jobs. Mm -hmm. um, everybody on my block, I lived on the block with mayors and um, congressmen from the city. So, yeah, yeah. in my whole neighborhood. So I did, even though I was born and raised in Compton, I did yeah. a lot in Orange County. So, like, okay. my, my tab, my travel basketball. So, if you're not familiar with California, Orange County is the best way I can describe is where Disneyland is. Yes. So it, it's um it's uh, not a lot of us. Well, back then it was not a lot of us. It's still quite a, not quite a few. Of, not a lot of us out there. Sure, sure. Um, but I discovered how people really now people that I have what I thought were my friends or their parents liked me since I was like nine or something, you know, playing mm -hmm. basketball. When he came into office and then start seeing how Ooh, they nice were, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and start seeing how they're, what they're posting. Yeah. So I was like, this how you kind of felt about me the whole time. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, like it was like, it, it brought it's forth. It's a watershed moment. Yeah, it, it brought, brought to light a lot of how people really felt about people yeah. in this country. So that's where I was going with it. You know I what? I had a moment like that. And uh, this is funny, though, because you just brought back a memory, right? So I was working for this company um, in in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina mm -hmm. at the time. It was a wireless communications company. And uh, it was only two, you know, African-Americans that was there, myself mm -hmm. and one other brother. So this was at the time during the OJ trial. Oh. Okay, <laughs> at the OJ trial. Oh. And when they got to the final day, uh -huh. they all gathered into the conference room. And me and my boy was like, man, well, I'm not going up there. I'm right. not going up there. I'm sitting in my office chilling. They physically came down to get me and him and said, no, you guys got to come up. Come up. 
like they just wanted us to um you know to to share in their jubilation yeah. when the guilty verdict came down <laughs> right and i'm just sitting because i'm thinking the brother's gonna be guilty you know yeah. What I'm yeah so i'm like man i don't want to go up there for this you know what yeah. i'm saying so on and so forth it was crazy but when they said not guilty oh my, my god, god. <laughs> You, <laughs> when you saw how that room oh, turned on a dime hey, wow. in the anger, and then looking at us like, like we did, did so like we right? ones did it. It's so crazy. It was hilarious, yeah, man. man. You know, I cracked a little smile. I was like, oh wow, okay, yeah. this is what y'all wanted to bring me up yeah. here for because they wanted it to be the opposite, opposite of what they yeah. wanted to be there, sitting to be the ones grinning and laughing and That's so on and that, so forth. That is so. This funny. is Charlotte, North Carolina, by the way. Right. right? So I was crying, laughing, man. When went back we went back downstairs to my office and we closed the door and we were just crying laughing yo <laughs> it was the most it hilarious is. thing it, it, what a shared moment so when people show you who they, they really, really are, are exactly yeah. it's so funny i'll never forget um and it i always tell people i'm blessed my parents are a little older than a lot of my friends um my parent, my father would have been 80. My mother is 79. That is, they're actually the age of a lot of my friends, grandparents. Sure, sure. So, um, but I always tell people I'm blessed because I had living history books in my house. Right, right. Um, my parents both come from the South. My mother from Evergreen, Alabama. And if you don't mm. know where that's at, um, it's probably it's about as big as this block. <laughs> but um, it's next, the next city is Mobile, that gotcha, you would know. Gotcha, my okay. father um, is from Memphis. Um, my father was a share um, he shared crop he was the eldest of his siblings right. and so they always they grew up in that era where mm -hmm. like my mother she can still she says she can still remember having to call you know people younger than her male and really? you know yeah. she's what you know my mother always tell us how um, she used to go to the movies and she used to have to buy her a ticket and then she had to walk around to the back mm -hmm. and then go upstairs and it was you know they never cleaned up there for them you know yeah. Yeah. So I always had living history books and I always say one thing I wish that someone would do and maybe I need to get on it because I say it all the time. We're losing a lot of our elders. Yes. Um, we're losing that connection to back then. I really wish somebody would get on and start recording. Yes. Like people like our parents, our grandparents who lived in that because they're trying to erase us out of the history, but they trying to they trying to take they trying to take everything Word. that was you know I, they're taking stories and I mean not stories but the truth that what they never the, the books in school never right, really right. told the truth yeah. but they're trying to eliminate us exactly um, out of you know talking about this emotional for the kids yeah yeah the CRC the CRT then critical race theory yeah. trying to get everything and just basically this is what I mean by when I say in America we have a tendency uh -huh. to white wash history and make it seem like well it wasn't so bad, bad right like regardless whether we're talking about you know the the September I mean not September the uh, January 6th oh. event or whether we're talking about you know going back to all the way to slavery day right. it, it wasn't so bad you no. know what I'm saying yeah. but it was it was very very bad yeah. and you know what's worse man you talking about the education system right but what's worse is when people like mm -hmm. our younger generation mm -hmm. right the millennials look upon the older generation as if uh, they don't have anything to offer. There's, like, right. there's no value there. I had a conversation earlier this week. Really? I'm not going to say who, with who, or whatever, but it really was kind of like, you know, it, it, the person kept using the word old, right? You oh. know, and I was sitting there like, dude, you know you're talking about me, right? Right. It, it was funny, man, but it was like, you know, we think differently. We're thinking about the future. We're thinking about this and we're thinking about that. And I'm sitting there like, but there is no, no future, future without, without them. Right. You know what I'm saying? There is no, and if you don't understand the, you know, the, the whole conversation started around, um, well, I'm just not going to vote. And I'm um, sitting back like, well, that's a, a huge mistake. Right. And you don't understand the sacrifices, yeah. right, that have been made in order to give you that right. right. And by not voting, you're just throwing it all away. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's kind of how the conversation started. But it was like a a, a, a millennial versus, right. you know, seasoned generation well, type of you know a situation. What I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm, blessed. Yeah. To, my daughter just made 24 last month. Mm -hmm. My daughter, <clears throat> just as my parents did with me, be, even before she was able to vote, um, yeah. she always went to the post. One of the happiest days of my life was to watch my daughter 
vote for the first time. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, 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 and we've always explained to her um, that the smaller elections help with the bigger elections. Exactly. And so, you know, um, and, sh- and she loves it. So, I mean, yeah. Um, she makes sure she she don't want to do the the mail in. She wants to actually go in. So yeah, exactly. I'm asking, but then again, my daughter was raised um, uh-huh. with around my parents right. and stuff too. So it you know it's sad that they really again. But I always say this: we don't have no big mamas no more. Right, right. We don't have no like. Yeah. That's the problem to me. Yeah. I, I'm not tripping on you know. Well, if big you mama, want, 27 years yeah. old. That ain't really yeah. big mama. You, you know, know I, mean? I, I, yeah. I, you know. Shout out to you, grandmas and yeah, all yeah. that. I get it, you know. But we don't have no big mamas no yeah. more. Like we don't have the structure um, in our community like we used to. Um, they don't, um, and that's a shame. We don't value our yeah. older generation like we should. That's the point right there. I was trying to make. Yeah. Like, the more I talk to you, Mika, the more I realize how much we have in common right okay. so honestly i grew up in a two-parent mm-hmm. home as well mm-hmm. right my parents were very much older than me i think mm-hmm. my, da- my dad was probably like 43 when i was born oh yeah you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i lost my father in 2020 okay he was 96 then so next oh, wow. year my father would be hitting the century mark Dang. if he was still here with us. see what i'm saying right so um and then my mom was 10 years younger than my dad so okay. she would be 89 right now well i lost her back in 2017 okay right? i lost so, my uh, father in 2017 is that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so but at the end of the day like you said i love the i love the way you framed that when you said you grew up with living history and with living history you books. know what i'm saying and that is exactly what's going on and we don't have that today we do. you know what i'm saying it, it the, the shift came you know when you know parenting started moving towards a younger age yeah right and now you got the grandparents right who are watching the uh the children while mom and dad is still out right. in the club right you know what i'm saying right. that's when the yeah. value the value system changed yeah. a little bit and we yeah. stopped focusing on things that we should be focusing on you know one of my favorite movies is um claudine <laughs> teddy said big mama trying to have hot girl summers <laughs> yeah. you're right brother yeah right, you're right. yeah i said you know what i tell and and i can't i can't not because i was a young parent i was yeah. 22 i i turned 22 and two weeks later i had my daughter okay but yeah. it's also the foundation that i had right, um, right. so exactly. um and it that helped a lot i always tell people i was a single parent mm-hmm. but i wasn't a single parent i hate using the term single parent Understood. because i had such an amazing village my, village. Um, my oldest sister which i call my oldest sister um if anybody know me, they know I call her my sister mama. Right, Because right. she actually helped raise me, too. Nice. Um, but, um, and she was a young mother. She had um, my niece. I have a niece that's four years younger than me. Is that right? Um, yeah, So, yeah. my sister had my niece when she was 17. Okay. Um, but, again, it's the foundation that we had in our household. Yeah. And in our, not just our household, just in our family across on both sides. On gotcha. my dad's side and on my mom's side. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, It's the mentality. Yeah, yeah. You know and, and, you know, what I it's so funny I always tell people my father was the coolest I used I called him my hip hop senior citizen so I used to get phone calls um, people be like oh we just saw your dad driving down the street um, and he was bumping Tupac like that was my dad my dad Word. was was that guy he had a better hip hop collection than I did mm. but my father was also a deacon gotcha. so you know exactly. Um, exactly. but um, it's, it, I tell people all the time it's so funny we got away from a lot of like discipline society started telling us how to raise our kids yeah so so funny um my father it was a rule at his house your kids come to our house and they mess up they get a whooping just like my kids right, you know, right. so yeah. and, so it did i'll never forget it was a, a cousin yeah, I told we got in trouble and we was doing something. We was jumping off the roof or something. So anybody know me know I'm a, I was a major tomboy. So like we, you know, got the mattress down and we uh, jumping off the roof. Just real stupid stuff. Like so, I don't know. I think one of my cousins end up getting hurt, and so um, my father made sure we was all right. And we all got a whooping. <laughs> y'all good? Y'all good? Y'all all good. right, now, here, take that. So my cousin yeah. was like, when came and pick, uh, yeah. when she came and picked up my my cousin, yeah. my older cousin, when came and picked up my younger cousin, and told my dad, like, you can't be whooping my kids. So he said, well, you or him can't come back no more. <laughs> and for years, they couldn't come back. 
up to the house right. Cause my dad That yeah. was his rule Like uh-huh. Your kid not coming to my house If if, if they're acting up Yeah They get You wouldn't believe Like I, I, I was a latchkey kid Right right And so But people If I did something alone, If I stopped somewhere too long Yeah there was a phone call uh-huh. later on that night. Somebody called, you know, well, Tamika was, you know, I know you told you not to go to that right. candy house, but she was at that candy house and she was in there for about 10 minutes. Right. It was people actually concerned about us growing up. Exactly. You don't have that. You People barely know their neighbors now. Yeah. You know the word for that, though? What? It's structure. Right. Mm-hmm. We have structure. Right. Mm-hmm. The youth today don't have any structure. Yeah, right. And, and there's no absolutes. Yeah. Right. So it's like you got, oh, that's your truth. Or that's my mm-hmm. truth mm-hmm. But there's only one truth Right You know what I'm saying And, and real truth is absolute So right. regardless of how you want to spin it Or how right. you want to look at it But that's not what we learn In today's society Right, sure right? Not. You can, I mean you watch the news Right And you got You know People who are in high positions Telling you lies Right And at the same token Right Telling you lies To try to make you, you believe really That it's the truth, truth yeah. But the truth is always Going to be absolute Right We had structure We yeah. had like you said The village man If, if, if I was out too long down the street or something like that one of the neighbors is like you know your mom wants you in the house before the lights come on yep. you know what I'm saying what are you doing out here such yeah. and such and, and whatever but it's like don't get caught doing no, anything no. foul right you know what I'm saying and, and, so, and yeah. that's crazy because like I just said a lot of we don't even know our neighbors half the time mm-hmm. anymore it's, it's I knew everybody in my neighborhood and, Same here. and yeah. everybody knew me right. so I yeah. mean so rather we regardless if I went two blocks over and did something they knew yeah who i was they knew who child i was exactly. and they knew if i did something wrong they knew i didn't do too much wrong because my father he had a a, a, a gold belt and yeah. <laughs> whooping so exactly. i tried not to do too much even though i was the the yolo kid i was yeah. you know live your life before <laughs> <laughs> before it was a popular yeah, saying, right. right that's crazy man i used to hate that man the soon as somebody say Ain't you Earl and Catherine's boy? I used to hate that. I knew I was God. I'm like, yeah, oh, man. God, here we go. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. The news is going to get home before me. Right? Yep. So, yeah. Crazy stuff, man. But you know what? I'm enjoying it. I, I love always sitting down and having a conversation with you. Appreciate all y'all, man, that's following us live. You know, make sure that you follow and, and get this on the YouTube channel as well. Mm-hmm. The Spotify. the uh, Even Apple, man. I, I didn't realize we had fell off of Apple Podcast. But oh. I fixed that last week. So, we okay. should be back up on Apple now. Yeah. To show me how Google to do all podcast, that. Podcast, the whole nine, y'all. So make sure y'all follow. And even Spotify is letting us put the whole video up now. Really? Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, so, yeah, you got to show me how. To, I don't know how to yeah. do any of that. So we, we appreciate your support, man. Like I said, it's been another cigars and conversations. I'm your cigar Mick. Got my special guest Mika with me today. Yes, make sure. Man. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, man. Because this, she more of a celebrity than me, Lies. right? So at the end of the day, I'm just a little black know, girl from. And man, everywhere I go, they be like, "Oh, tapping that." Oh, do you know Tamika? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know that's my sister. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you the one, the first one to put me on camera. Now you got to let them know. You got to you know, tell them. You know, I'm hey, one of the first ones to put her on the camera. The student is outshining the master right now, and I love it. I absolutely love it. But tell them how to follow you and everything that you're doing right now. Okay, so um, you can follow me on my um, personal page, which is Sexy Tomboy, S-E-X-I-I-T-O-M-B-O-Y. Um, and then... Tap and Ash, so uh, T A P N A S H, uh, Tap and Ash Social Club. So it's Tap and Ash Social Club on Instagram and on Facebook, Tap and Ash. Um, and I do uh, every Monday, I do weekly updates on what's going on for the week. Uh, Tuesday, I do the Tap In Tuesday. But um, I'm getting back out, so I'll be at more of these cigar events. You know, I had to, you know, I had to get acclimated to, to Vegas. Right, you know, right. I'm still, you know, so now I'm kind of settled. I'm able to go back into the cigar community like I used to. But yeah. I need to be like you, all in Atlanta. You didn't tell nobody you went to Atlanta. Okay, see what happened was mm. the way my uh, way my text messaging worked. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> He was not just talking about it. He giving me flat. He wasn't supposed to remember that. He was all in the letter. He going live. He all like, but that looked like a dope event. What was, was all this man. different it, cigar? It was uh, like five different lounges, lounges on the south, south side that came together to throw an event. And they called it the South Atlanta Cigar Week. I you know love it. Yeah. Man, that looked that look nice. I, I, I got to... 
I got to look into that for next year. Well, I'm telling you right now, I am going to Atlanta Cigar Week. Okay, let's go. September. All right, so we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to show up with a crew. We're going to show up with a crew. We're going to get go. all T-shirts. All t- let's, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right, y'all, y'all heard it, man. We're going to be in Atlanta for Atlanta Cigar Week in September. I'm looking forward to that. All right. So, uh, yeah, and shout out to Her Ficionado, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, you know, and, and the whole team that puts yeah. that on every year. They be doing their thing. Yeah, yeah they absolutely. do. Absolutely. All right, y'all. We're going to get out of here because I think I'm about to run out of time on camera one anyway. <laughs> but it's always a pleasure, man. We'll see you on the next one. Not going to tell you when it is. You got to follow, right? Right. And make sure that you like, share, and comment on everything, right? On on, on the IG, on the Facebook, the YouTube, the whole nine, all right? Till next time, we out, y'all. Peace. Right. Peace.